All right. You know I introduced you. We are going to talk today about sinusoids. Woo! And graph a sinusoid. What's a sinusoid? It's a dinosaur. Yeah, it almost sounds like a dinosaur now. I didn't even think of that. It's like a dinosaur. I'm so starting to think it has something to do with shapes. It has to do something with shape because oid, right? Soid. Yeah. Like an oid. oid. Like a trapezoid. What, like a trapezoid. And something maybe to do with sign because of signs. Yeah, exactly. So it's like a sign. What the so what uh, sinusoids are is they are, are sign-shaped graphs or curves. And so it's a general shape of things. So anyway, we're going to graph uh, the sine function here today. And first of all, we're going to have to label our graph. Most of you have drawn on your graph this situation here. And what I want you to do from your x-axis on the left side is count up 10 uh, squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm going to put 0.5 here at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1.0. All right? And then, then below, we're going to count 10 below. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Put 0. 0.5 here. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And it's going to be negative. Very good. Observant. Very good. Yeah, negative 1.0. Good call. So this here on our y-axis, our, our dependent variable axis, is going to be called amplitude. What does amplitude mean? What's the meaning of amplitude? Up and down. Up and down. You got anybody in physics right now? Yeah, we're talking physics, but... Yeah, amplitude has to do with... It's like a synonym for height. But, but it's a particular use for wave properties. Have you talked about frequencies and stuff like that? Yeah, so, th th so this is related to that very much. Anyway, now we're going to talk about the horizontal axis. The horizontal axis is labeled here at the far right by the symbol. What do we call this little symbol, that zero with the? Theta. Theta, theta right? Theta, very good. Uh, Greek letter, so theta. And we're going to be, our theta is going to be measured in radians, not in degrees. So we're going to put in parentheses below here, radians. And that's why we have the unit circle. I hope you have it in your hand or can, can refer to it. Now, what I want you to do is count. Uh, we're going to count 12 spaces to the right here from the uh, y-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You kind of make a bigger mark of 12. And then after that, count 12 more spaces. 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, how many spaces do we have from the y axis all the way here? 24, 24 right? 24. Okay, what we're doing is we're graphing the entirety of, uh, of the angle of a circle. How many degrees are there in a full circle? 360. 360. So this mark here is going to represent 360 degrees, but because we are in radians, what are we going to place here instead of 360? Pi. Two pi. Two pi. Very good. Yeah. Two pi. Ding, ding, ding. ding. Very, good. very good. Very good. Okay? Very good. And where would halfway between at 12 go? What would that be? 180, which is pi. 180, which is pi. Very good. I like you guys. Vocabulary. All right. Good. Now we're going to... Uh, examine the others. Now, if you take in your calculator and divide, we, remember we have 24 spaces, right? Mm -hmm. And we have 360 degrees total. Do you have, and Charity's already doing it. Good job, Charity. 15. 360 divided by 24. 15. 15. So each one of these gradations here, these, these squares represent how many degrees? 15. 15 degrees. So let's go over to our first mark. Now, over here, oh, I forgot this one here. What's going to be the degree measure here? At the zero. Zero. zero degrees and radians, right? Zero radians. Uh -huh. so, so we go over here, 15, 30 degrees. What's the angle at 30 degrees? Thank you. On your five or six. 
five or six, and over 45 degrees. Pile four. Pile four. Pile four. And then pile three. three. Pile two. And then we have to go ahead and skip two because here we're at 60 degrees and this is 75. And somebody in the other class was asking me, what, a, what does a 12th represent? Well, that would be a pi over 12, right? But we're not going to mark that. It's not in your standard unit circle. Uh, anyway, here we go. Like you say, pi over 2. And then over here we have 2 pi over 3. Two pi over three and then uh, 3 pi over 4. 5 pi over 6. And then skip 2, right, to pi. Are you skip this one? Yeah, we're skipping, we're skipping the, the pi over 12 marks. And then the other one. Now, we're, gonna, we're over here at pi, 180 degrees. And now we're up here to 210 degrees, which is? 210 degrees. 7 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6. Oh, you don't love me. And then over here we have, it's a pi over 4, it's over 4, right? 5 pi over 4. 5 pi over 4. 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3. I have to write no, it. No, that's what I'm writing. Oh, 2 pi over 3 is over here. Excuse me. That's you guys what I'm are writing. distracting that's me. Okay. The next one's going to be 4 pi over 3. You guys are paying attention. All right, next. Over here, we have, what's the 270 degrees? 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2, and then we go on another 30 degrees, we have 5 pi over 3, then uh, at 315, 7 pi over 4, finally we have 11 pi over 6. Five or six. All right. So, do we have every point here on our unit circle as far as on the x-axis? Yes, we do. We have it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to plot the sine curve. No, no, we're going to, we're going to have to move while you have time to catch up. Now. Let's, uh, where do we see, what is our sign at the angle of zero? Our sign would be... Uh, where, what do we see, where do we see sign on the formula chart, or on the unit circle chart? We see it right on the outside in parentheses. All these things on the outside of the unit circle in parentheses. That's our where our cosines and sines are. So, what is it? What is our coordinate pair at angle of zero? One zero. One comma zero. So, in the coordinates, those two coordinates, one and zero, right? Of that coordinate pair, which one of those represents the sign? The one or the zero? One. The zero. The zero represents the sine. The sine is the y value in the coordinate for sine. So, what we're going to do is mark zero right here. Now, if we go an entire rotation of the circle, what is the sine going to be over here on the far right side at 2 pi? An entire rotation. It's going to be zero also, right? And where else do we see a sign of zero on our unit circle? One other place. We see it right at pi. Very good. Now we're going to go up here to our amplitude, and, and we drew an amplitude of one because I knew, I know the amplitude of this sine curve is one. So is there any place on the unit circle that you see a sine value of one? Yes, a pi over two. So let's look at pi over two. We go up to one. Yeah, three pi over two. And uh, let's look three pi over two. Is that an amplitude of one? Oh, never mind. Uh, negative it's negative one. one. It's so. negative one, right? So you go three pi over two to negative one. But do we have enough points to see sort of what the shape of our sine curve is going to look like? Yes. We do, don't we? So let's go ahead and fill out the rest of it. We have we have four of the sixteen points. Well, actually, five if you include the first and the last are the same. 
What is going to be the sign of pi over 6? It's going to be 1 half. So where does 1 half come up here on the axis? It's the point five. Five. comes right here at the point 0.5. Okay, good. So that, that's where we have our, yeah, our sine of pi over 6. What about our sine of, of pi over 4? What's that? Square root of 2 over 2. Okay, now where are we going to put square root of 2 over 2 in this gradation here? Hold on, we got somebody going to the calculator. Pi over 4. It says zero, I mean, point, 0 0.707. 0.707. So here we are at 0 0.7. So it's just going to be a shade over here, right? So we just, if you put it right here on the, on the 0.7, that's about as accurate as we can make it. Okay, what about the next one? What about pi over 3? What's going to be the sign of pi over 3? Yeah. Pi over 3. The square root of three, three over two. two. Square root of three over two. So what's that going to be as a decimal equivalent? Uh, eight point eight six six. Point eight seven. Point eight seven about. Eight so nine. just put it maybe a little over halfway between the eight and nine. And then if we come around the other side, come come over here, we have kind of a little axis of symmetry going back this way. You see that? Yeah. And pi over 2. So, at, yeah, pi over 2, we kind of have an axis symmetry because if you look at 2 pi over 3, what's the sign of 2 pi over 3? Uh, square root of 3 over 2, right? Which is the same as this side over here. So if we just reflect, right? And then if we, ref then we have, what's going to be the sign of 3 pi over 4? Uh, it's going to be square root, seven. Two two. square root of 2 over 2, which is 0. 0.7. And then the sine of 5 pi over 6 is 1 half. One half. So now we have a little, uh, we can draw probably the first half of our curve like this. Just kind of sketch it like this. It looks like a parabola, right? It, it isn't a parabola. Uh, but a parabola. It's, it, it very much has the appearance of a parabola, doesn't it? In fact, you could probably model that half pretty well with a parabola, I would guess. We could try it sometime. The like parabola. And at the left end here, I'm going to take a little, I'm going to make, draw a little arrow at the left end. Okay, let's go ahead and proceed beyond pi. What's happening to the sine value as we go beyond it's pi? Going it's going negative, right? So let's go ahead and take 7 pi over 6. What's the sine of 7 pi over 6? Negative 1. So negative one half. So we come over to negative point five, and so it intersects right here. Okay. What about five pi over four? Negative the square root of two over two. Okay. About negative point seven. Negative square root of two over two. Then we have uh, four pi over three. Okay. Negative point eight six or whatever that is right there. And then, do we have some kind of symmetry like we had last time? Yeah, we do, don't we? So we come over here, and we should have negative mm -hmm. square root of 3 over 2 here yes, sir. at 5 pi over 3. And then we should have negative square root of 2 over 2 right here. Yes. And then negative 1 half at 11 pi over 6. And so we have, if we draw our sketch like this, and, and I think Siege is pretty right. It does look it's like it's parabolic. There's something messed up here. You know what I did? <laughs> For some reason, let's see, one, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I have I just drew it in the wrong place. Let me fix that. I drew the point five in the wrong place. I knew it looked funny. Okay, point five goes right here. Okay, then 0 0.7 will go here, 0 0.86 here. Okay, that looks better. Does that look right now? Okay, yeah, it just looked a little 
But Siege is right, doesn't look kind of parabolic. Parabola snake. Parabola. Okay, this is the sine curve, and this is what we call the sine wave. parent function. Or sine wave. You said wave, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of sine wave. And so we're going to call this the sine parent function, which is what it is. And the we're going to go over the characteristics of this and other sinusoids. What is the amplitude of this? One. The amplitude of this sine parent function equals one because it's one unit in height. Now, what is the height of the entire wave here? Two. The higher and so the height of the wave is actually double the amplitude, right? Because amplitude goes both ways. So anyway, we have that. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is frequency. When it comes to waves, have you talked about frequency of waves? Sound wave. Uh, 220 hertz, or seconds per second, is A below middle C. And so, our frequency, what's our frequency of this going to be? It's going to be 1, exactly, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. X. Thank you, X. You guys, X wants to get credit. I'm, I'm all for that. Now, now, another thing that's related to frequency is called period. Period. Period is the reciprocal of the frequency. So the reciprocal, what do you have to multiply times 1 to equal 1? 1, right? So Lourdes is right. So, but in the case we had 220 cycles per second, right? If we had 220 hertz, right, cycles per second, the period would be 1 over 220, right? Reciprocal. So period is reciprocal of frequency. But I, I tend to be able to understand period better myself. But they're very much related. Next thing we have is called phase shift. Okay, the phase shift we have for this, uh, this sinusoid, the parent function, is zero. In other words, we're saying that it's not shifted. Now, in, in subsequent... Uh, in subsequent lessons, we're going to talk about how to change, how to change the amplitude, how to change the frequency, how to change the period, how to change the phase shift. The phase shift just shifts it left or right. The amp so it would be just a shift. Uh, uh, the frequency or period would be a, a horizontal squeeze or stretch, and an amplitude change would be a vertical. Squeeze or stretch. Like a yeah, like a spring. So we're going to see what it takes to change this parent function uh, accordingly for all these attributes. We're going to squeeze and stretch. Both. We will squeeze or stretch. We will do both. Thank you. I'm glad we have that on camera. Thanks, guys. Been a good class.